Hello YouTube and welcome to a new Unity 3D tutorial. So last tutorial we made it, so when you shoot a character, they spawn coins for you. So if we just test it and shoot this one, boom, perfect, it spawns coins, we can collect them. Great. But what I want to add quickly is really, really simply as well, is make it so when you shoot someone with an element, so water, ice, fire, um, it spawns particles to do with that on the enemy. And then eventually we can make it range so like, and um, we can add skills into it, you have one out of five chance to light the enemy on fire causing extra damage. So it'd be really cool. So what we're going to do first do is look at the particles we want, then we're going to make the prefab, make it spawn on the character, then we're going to make it fade out so it just doesn't go click off. So to start we need particles. So instead of creating some, if you go to standard assets, particles, there's two here for us to use. There's fire one, which is just basically a floor fire with smoke and everything, or you can use flame, which kind of suits the human body like in a cylinder shape. So I'm going to use this one, you can use any you like. So, now that I've got this one, I don't want the inner core, because the inner core is the top of it, so if I drag that out, that's the tip of it, I don't really want that, so I'm going to get rid of it. You keep it in if you like. Um, I'm going to keep the light source, but I'm going to attach it inside of outer core and take outer core out and delete everything else. So I've just got the outer core and the light, because then it looks cool. So I'm going to rename this to fire. And the light source I'll just keep inside. So I'm going to stick this into its own prefab. So if we go to our prefabs folder and copy the name of particles so we can create it. Folder, particles. I'm going to stick fire inside it to create a new prefab. Great. So now what we need to do Oh, I got hiccups. Um you need to go to your entity and find open up enemy collisions. And in here what we're gonna do is make it spawn whenever it's hit by fire. So first thing we have to do is duplicate coin object <coughs> and call it fire particles. just like that. But I'm going to make a slight adjustment to it because at the moment if we hit him with fireball it does all this and it looks really cool but if we hit him with Hadouken it doesn't do anything so we're going to change it slightly by creating a new function and call it death or call it hit then hut hit yep. and in here I'm going to copy everything except destroy call we're going to keep destroy call on its own because if we put it down here it doesn't know what call is there is ways to get around it but I'm not going to introduce you to that yet just yet because there's a lot of new things you'll be learning in this tutorial so I'll copy hit just get rid of call and just paste hit here and we'll do the same for the bottom one here perfect so now they both work and not just one so that's really easy and we've got lots more room here so, we've got our fire particles, now we have to spawn it on the character. So we've already got this in our hit, so we can just basically copy it. So copy this line where it spawns your code, your, where is it, coins, and we'll paste it be below all this. So we'll call it spawn fire, instantiate, we'll spawn our fire particles, and our new position will be transform dot position so get the current objects position so that'll work perfectly next we have to test it so make sure it hits some and spawns so search all entities entity and we'll assign the prefab to it particles fire boom now let's test it and see if it spawns fire for us let's get rid of that so let's see fire yep she's on fire and she's clearly on fire 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 perfect however there is a small glitch if these were to move the f the fire would stay in midair and it wouldn't follow them we want it to follow them which is really really simple to do and for all of you that are saying make it parent correct so let's see spawn fire dot transform dot parent equals transform. That'll set it to the current object this is attached to, so our character or the enemy. So let's go and see. 
shoot them in wherever you like, and boom. And now if we were to go here and grab this woman and move her, the fire would follow her as she runs around, so we can hilariously watch this woman slowly die. It's a game, it's allowed, yes. So, what we're going to do now is fix a small glitch, which I need to show you. If you watch the civilian here and the entity as I shoot her, boom. And then we shoot her again, and then again. She just keeps getting more and more fire inside of her, which is not what we want. We need it to only spawn if there's one there. So what we're going to do is type above here, if game object dot find and I said a couple of tutorials ago there's a way by printing slashes that you can determine an object where it is so we can so if we type um, but before this we type transform dot game object dot find so here we'll type transform will make it search inside of this whatever this is attached to so game object dot find will type Entity, entity. So it'll search inside entity. Oh, we could just get use that then. Yeah, never mind then. Entity, and then inside here, yeah, we do need slashes. So apologies, and then we need to find fire clone. Just like that. So if you put this forward bracket, it'll search inside this object, and then inside entity for fire clone does not equal null. So if it works, so if it finds it, uh, change that again. So if it doesn't find it, it'll spawn it. But if it does find it, it should leave it. Fingers crossed. Let's see. Perfect. And try again. Perfect. So it still works, but now it won't spawn it. So that code's a bit different to what we usually do. It'll transform, so search whatever in this script's attached to, so our surgeon for this example, and then find for a game object named entity, but we're actually looking for fire clone inside entity. So that's what this forward slash means. And if it equals null, spawn it. Perfect. The only thing left now is to make it slowly fade out, which is easier than you think. So we can't put that in a duking yet because we don't really need to spawn fire. But then again, we'll put it in just in for later. So entity fire clone spawn energy. That'll do. So it'll sp spawn fire for now, but when we get an energy particle, it'll spawn energy. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is find uh, our scripts folder and we'll see if we've got a particles one hmm items timed where's our timed object destroy oh dear that's not it destroy bullet destroy or timed object destructor we'll use bullet destroy so in weapons yeah, it's not a very good place to put it. We'll just create a new folder, it's far easier. And we'll name this one, just like we have our prefabs, particles. So we're going to, inside here, create a new script called fading destroy. Because that's what it's going to do, fade in and out. Well, out, but yeah. So, uh, the majority of this will be based off alpha. Other people will know alpha ba aren't called opacity. Opacity and alpha are basically the C transparency of it. So if it's 100, you can't see it. it's a solid block. But if you turn the alpha down or the opacity or transparency, you'll slowly start to see through until it's completely invisible. So that's what we'll be working with for the majority of this. So above this, we're going to create a new variable. We'll make it a private one, var. And we'll call it timer, and this will be uh, a thousand. That'll do. So that's how fast I want it to destroy. So it'll last for a thousand, which is, I believe, ten seconds, and then it'll just be gone. So also, we're going to create is a new private variable called um, 
color yeah and this is a new one for you we're going to type color 32 and we're going to carry this on in a minute but what I'll explain where it is color if you just put color will be RGB color or RGBA in our case RGB stands for red green blue it's the colors of computers so there are 255 uh, red green and blue colors on a computer and you can imagine how many different things you can get so 111, 112, 113, 114 it'll go forever and ever and ever um, there are other ones like hexadecimal colors and everything but we're going to use this one um, the reason it's 32 is because normal color in unity is between 0 to 1 say you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 but that's not what we need because if we look at our particles which are evidently not here so ignore that error we'll fix that later if you drink out your fire and go down here if you click your tint color that's not between 1 that's 128 which is not what we need so the 32 allows you to put um, full numbers in there so 128, 225, stuff like that. So what we're going to do now is type color32 equals and now we're going to set some colors to it. So we need some red, green, blue colors. So we're just going to say 128, 128, 128. So it doesn't lose its color. That's what it is. If we were to load it back up, that's what RGB would be. i best show you where that is. Down to tint, click it here. RGB. So if you play with the R, you'll see it goes red and so on. So we'll call this 128 again. I know that was 120 before, but I prefer it as 128. And this is alpha, so this is what we're going to do. Start at 100, and then slowly make it fade out. Oh, that's not even a moment, until it's gone. So now it looks disappeared. That's it, and then when it's there, we just destroy it. Perfect. So, we need to start changing the A, but not the colour. But in order to change the A, you need all the colours. So 128, 128, 128 comma and this is where we put our alpha if you're not following just type it and you'll understand it within seconds so our alpha is going to start off at 100 just like that so get rid of this and save it see if we've got any errors we shouldn't have three okay it really doesn't like that does it okay new plan call it color 32 and in our, in our function update what we'll do is we'll type if in fact yeah we'll type color equals color 32 and then we'll put our generate generate a bit here like that so it's, it's going to be ticking tick 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 and it will be assigning the color to color um what just like i taught you before we need to set this color to the new renderer because it's going to create it as an instance so we're going to type um, renderer dot material just like we did and we're not going to put set material or anything we're going to put dot set color which will start all the colors of materials and next in these we put a bracket and a speech mark and in this speech mark we put what is what name of it we want to edit and it will always start with an underscore I don't know why just an underscore but we're gonna type tint color American color with double capital letters but in here you could have spectator color diffuse color um, tree color nature color particle color you could have all of them that's why you've got to have the speech marks then you put a comma then you put what color you want to set it to which for us is color so bit new if you've not done it before but really simple all we need to do now is change the alpha you could just put dot a minus equals one by seconds but I don't really want to do that I'm going to use a tiny bit of math to make it look cooler so what I'm going to do is above the color here we're going to type timer minus equals one so timer tick 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 like we do and then under color we're going to type uh, what we're going to type, yeah, color dot a, which is um, color R G B A. If you want to change the R, you put R. We're going to alpha, and we're going to set it to, and we're going to put brackets because we'll be doing some maths. If you don't know what brackets are for in maths, just 
don't think about it. Just basically it means you have to do this first kind of thing, whatever's in here first. So we're going to put timer divided by 10. The reason I'm going to do it by 10 is because 1000 divided by 10 is 100. Alphas don't have 1000, so if we divide this by 10 and get 100, say this is 99, well, 999, we get 99, um, 500, we get 50. So it's constantly be putting it to the correct number if you want. We'll set timer to a normal one so you can see, and we'll set color to a normal one. As, in fact, we'll leave them. Yeah, we'll, it'll work. So this is going to work perfectly. Let's just test it, because it's going to keep going and going and going and getting rid of it. So eventually we'll get an error, but we've already got an error because we've not assigned it. Find it and scripts come here. There. We're going to put fading destroy all the way at the bottom. Boom, fading destroy. So if we play it now and light someone on fire, you'll see it to slowly tick down. So let's just watch it. So in 10 seconds, you can be counting if you like, it should slowly start to fade out and disappear. So as you can see, it's slowly going. Slowly, slowly going. As you can see, it's becoming more see-through and it's gone. See, that good. You could make a, play with a timer, but make sure you play with this math correctly, because you'll end up doing something weird. I think if you want it for 500, you just set this to 5. That should work. And then you can go off that basis. So 7, 700, I think it's that. Don't test it on calculator first. Yeah. So, the only thing what's left is when the timer ticks down, we destroy the object. Simple as that. So if we type if timer is less than 5 so it's almost gone but not completely gone we're going to put destroy this dot game object just like that so it'll slowly be gone then it'll destroy then we can shoot up again and light on back on fire again so let's see we have more waiting so let's shoot them boom shoot some more because they'll fade out Oi. Okay, we have a small glitch with it not finding it, but we'll have a look in a minute. Wait for it to tick down. It's slowly going. And. Gone. Shoot him again. Perfect. So the only error with it is probably. Probably. Um, this here, which says um, if it doesn't find it, then not spawn it. But because it's on multiple enemies, it's going to keep doing it. So for now, we'll just get rid of that, just so we can shoot more than one enemy. Yeah. So we'll try it again. We will be able to shoot them up, but five shots then they'll be dead anyway. So that's just a small error we'll have to fix. Perfect. So it'll still fade out. We can shoot everyone. It looked like he had a book right then. What we'll do is make it so when you shoot a wall, it'll put, not just bounce off, it'll put the actual flame wall facing it. So everyone's burning. And she's wanting to be burned again. So let's just kill her. She's dead. We do need to make it follow the animation, but we'll do that another time. So we've done the basics of it. There's a few glitches in it. Um, if you don't understand anything, please comment below. This is the really new one, the 32-bit, but we've already played with rendering that material. So thank you for watching. Uh, sorry if it was too confusing. Join my Facebook group if you need direct contact, and see you next time.